This weekend marks the Feast of Pentecost and the Australian bishops have asked that from Pentecost this year to Pentecost next year we as a Catholic people throughout the nation observe a year of grace. And the year of grace has as its sub subtext starting afresh with Christ. The year of grace calls us to reflect that at the centre of our faith is the person of Jesus Christ whom we can know. Many of us <coughs> this morning encountered the forgiving Christ in the sacrament of reconciliation. Jesus keeps his promises throughout the scriptures. He assures us that if we have a heart for forgiveness, a heart for change, then our sins are forgiven. Full stop. No ifs or buts. Our sins are forgiven. And this is the forgiving Christ that we need in the sacrament. The Christ who calls us to be like him. The Christ who nourishes us in the sacrament of the Eucharist. It's the Christ we know. And already, my brothers in Christ, we are clearly speaking about a Jesus that we know as distinct from one we just know all about. Jesus Christ is the person at the heart of our lives. And among other things, he calls us to love. The gospel today, he calls us to love. Those who keep my commandments love me. It's a sign that our hearts are right, that it's not just a superficial nod of the head acknowledging Jesus is somewhere there in my life in a vague kind of a way. But keeping the commandments calls us to a love that is <coughs> genuine, that is real. It's easy enough to say the word love. It's more difficult to communicate the meaning behind the word. Some things that masquerade under the label of love bear little resemblance to what Jesus is asking of us. turn to the Gospel for a moment and reflect on that aspect of what our Lord asks us to do. The thing about the love that he speaks about is not what we feel or what we say but what we do. He who keeps my commandments loves me. Jesus is telling his disciples how they can best express their love for him. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, the commandments I have given you. This same principle of action carries on to all our relationships. We show our love primarily by our readiness to act, to live them. Of course, I would not want to imply that Jesus somehow discounts verbal communication. There's nothing wrong with saying, I love you. To the contrary, those three little words can be the most powerful, the most beautiful sentence in all the world to look at someone and say, I love you. To say, I love you, that in a way that it's more than a sentimental statement, it can be a redemptive force. Perhaps more hearts have been lifted, more lives have been changed by those three simple words sincerely spoken than by any sermon that's ever been preached. But still, we know that words mean nothing unless behind them there is something real. And in characteristic fashion, Jesus chose to deal with reality. He didn't discount the verbal communication of love. He simply went beyond it because he knew that love is much more than a word. I guess this is where most of us have our biggest problem. We've grown up with the concept that love is an emotion, a fond affection that we feel for another person. 
Then we come to the New Testament and find that Jesus speaks of love as a responsibility, as a commandment. I command you to love one another. We hear him say, love God with all your heart. This is the first commandment in the law. The second is unlike unto it, love your neighbour as yourself. And again he says, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. And finally, we hear that far-reaching, seemingly impossible imperative, love your enemies. My brothers in Christ, we all need to understand that Jesus speaks of love. He speaks of it in a way that he's not thinking of happy, fuzzy feelings or emotions. There's no real virtue in being naturally fond of someone. Neither is there any sin in being not at all fond of somebody else. But you see, it's what we do with those feelings that results in sin or virtue. Anyone can say, I will do good to that man because as a matter of emotion I like him. It takes strength of character to say, as a matter of emotion I do not like that man, but as a matter of Christian principle, I only want good for him. We can do that. In the mind of Christ, love is primarily a matter of attitude and action. The attitude is, regardless of how I feel about a person, I will treat him as I want other people to treat me. The action is to go out and do it. And this is where we start to get real. We may not be able to control how we feel, but we can control what we do. So now we have, in a sense, an operational answer to the confusing mandate of Christian love. The important thing is not words and feelings, but deeds. This is what Jesus said in our text today. If you love me, you will keep the commandments I have given you. There's more to love than isn't there than moonlight nights and starry eyes. We know that to succeed, couples in marriage begin the slow, wonderful, difficult task of growing toward each other, giving each other the highest priority day in, day out, choice by choice. And yes, romance is a wonderful thing, but unless it eventuates in thoughtfulness, kindness, respect, all of the songs and all of the poems and all of the flowers in the world won't get you where you want to be. And look from the family, look to the world, and still that principle holds. You can speak of your love for the poor, you can shed tears of compassion for the plight of the poor, but unless you are willing to invest some time and effort and yes, money, to help someone break the cycle of poverty, your speeches and your tears are not the stuff of love in the way Jesus speaks of it. What a realist Christ is, my brothers in Christ. We would want to make love something soft and dreamy, but he won't have that. He defines it in terms that are strong, that demand something of us. In a sense, a love that costs. If you really want to know about that, gaze across above the sanctuary. Fix your eyes on the image of the crucified Lord. State sentiment is fine. But we know it can be fickle. Words can be beautiful, but they can also be hollow. The real test of love is not what we feel or what we say, but in fact, how we live. 
Love is an action, a way of living at home, a way of living in our place of work, at our church, wherever we happen to be. Jesus calls us to that love. The man who has my commandments and who keeps them, he it is who loves me.